Good afternoon from Kyoto. It might be good morning in somewhere around the world. Good evening might be around the world, somewhere around the world. And good afternoon, maybe late evenings somewhere. Uh, this is Baburam Areal. I'm a lawyer by profession, and I'm from Nepal. And I lead a uh, digital uh, freedom coalition in Nepal. And moderating this uh, session for today. And I have a very uh, distinguished uh, panel here to discuss uh, artificial intelligence and child protection issues uh, in, in contemporary world. Uh, let me briefly introduce my uh, esteemed panelist. My uh, next to me, uh, senior advocate Gopal Kishnagimire, he is the president of Nepal Bar Association, and he brings more than 30, 35 years experience of uh, litigation uh, in, in Nepal. And Yuta Kral is uh, a very senior uh, child right protection activist, and she is uh, leading uh, her organization and contributing uh, through uh, Dynamic Coalition on Child Rights. And Sarim Aziz is Policy Director for South Asia at Meta and having a long experience on uh, platform issues and production of uh, child rights and other uh, issues as well. And next to Sarim, uh, Michael uh, is there. Uh, Michael is uh, directly dealing with various uh, uh, issues. Uh, he, is, he belongs to Zambian police and senior official at Zambian police, and especially uh, focusing on cybercrime investigation and digital forensic analysis. So uh, introducing uh, my uh, panel, I have my uh, colleague, Ananda Gautam, who is moderating online uh, participants. And uh, I would like to begin with a very uh, brief uh, uh, concept that what is the objective of today's discussion. Just right hand side, uh, I am seeing two kids. Uh, coincidentally, they are my kids as well. Uh, they are very passionate with the technology. They are very keen uh, on using internet. And um, we have a big discussion whether we allow our kids to, uh, ex to give access to technology and the connectivity. And our experience shows that uh, allowing them uh, in the platforms are opportunity for them. They are uh, growing themselves with uh, new regime, new world, and they have created their own set of world in, in their own way. I see, sometimes I fear whether um, I'm leading my kids to, to very risky world or not. And, and this leads to me to engage at uh, this uh, issue, uh, technology and the risk, and technology and the opportunity. Now, artificial intelligence has taken uh, over uh, most of the human intelligence in, in various uh, areas of work, like uh, education, uh, law, and other uh, area of profession. And uh, artificial intelligence is giving opportunity. Lots of opportunities are there. But uh, simultaneously, there are some risks as well. So uh, in this uh, uh, discussion, will uh, take uh, the uh, artificial intelligence uh, issues and the child protection issues and harnessing uh, child protection through uh, artificial intelligence. There are various uh, tools available around the world, and, and this, these are accessible to, these are accessible to uh, the, uh, all the segment of people, including child and, and elderly people. So uh, I'll uh, come to, uh, at the beginning, I'll go uh, to Michael, who is uh, 
whose responsibility is dealing with uh, this kind of issues uh, regularly. Uh, I'll, I'll go to Michael. Uh, what is your uh, personal experience uh, from the, your department? Uh, uh, what are the major issues that uh, you have experienced? Uh, and, and once uh, we hear from you, then we'll take this discussion uh, at further level. Michael. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, so as a law enforcement officer dealing with uh, cybercrime and uh, digital forensic issues, um, moderating of uh, content online from the human side and from the AI side has posed both a challenge to our little ones in the sense that speaking from somebody from the developing world is that we are mostly consuming news or any other form of entertainment or any other form of new or of content online that is not generated in our region of course we we now con we we now generating our own content but the aspect of um, like uh, get like being a gatekeeper as parents or using technology to filter that content which is not supposed to be shown or exposed to the little one has become a, a little bit of a challenge. I'll give you like a simple example. If um, you are working, you are analyzing a mobile device from maybe a child, who can deem a child who is maybe 16, the content that you find in their phones, the data that they've, in terms of the browsing history, like there is no control. So whatever is exposed to an adult ends up being exposed to a little one. As a result, it has become a little bit challenge in terms of addressing issues of content moderation on both fronts. Of course, there could be some aspects of AI that could help moderate some of his content. But at the end of it, or if we remove the human, if, you, if we remove the human factor out of it, AI will not be able to address most of the challenges that we are facing right now. Further on, in terms of um, combating crime or combating child exploitation incidences, you will find that most of these sites that host most of the content, despite them having clear guidance and policing on, gate, on gatekeeping in terms of age, our children still find their way in places online that they're not supposed to. Of course, there's no system that will detect the use of a phone to indicate their age or their gender. As a human being would, it's, it still remains a challenge in the sense that once a phone is in the hands of a minor, you don't have control over what they see, you don't have control on what they do with it. So basically, it's, it has become a serious challenge on the part of the little ones and us enforcing cyberspace to ensure that the little ones, the minors, are protected from content that is not supposed to be exposed to them. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I would like to know your uh, experience. Uh, I, I hope uh, I belong to uh, Nepalese society and, and Zambian society might be uh, a similar uh, from um, education and all these things. What what are the uh, trends of uh, uh, abuse cases uh, uh, in in Zambia? Any any? Do you remember any trends? Uh, so basically, the, in terms of abuse, it's Zambia like any other country has those challenges. So basically, I'll give an example um, of late. The talks on child online protections have been gaining momentum. There's been some clear guidelines from government to ensure that issues of child online protection, data privacy, issues to do with uh, the safety and security of everyone, including the little ones online, has been gaining momentum through the enactment of um, various legislations. Like we have the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act, of 2021, which clearly has now outlined the types of cyber bullying which are outroad. So basically, if you go on social media platforms such as Facebook, TikTok, 
Instagram, Snapchat, and all those, most of the bad actors who are engaging in these bad activities of either sending bad images to the children or any other content that we deem is inappropriate, most of them have been either arrested or talked to, depending, at times it's their, within their age range, they, they share these things among us, their minors. If it's a minor, of course, you talk to them, you counsel them, you try to bring them to sanity in terms of their thinking. But if it's an adult, you have to know their intentions. So one of our experiences is that the law itself is slowly addressing some of these challenges that we are facing. But again, that does not stop there. There are a lot of cases or scenarios that remain unreported. So it is difficult for us to literally address those challenges. But in a nutshell, I would literally tell you that the challenges are there, the problems are there, but of course addressing them is not a one-day issue. We, it's, it's about continuous improvement and continuous usage of um, the law and technology based, especially from the service providers, to address some of these challenges. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I'll come to uh, Yuta. Uh, Yuta, you have been uh, engaged in uh, child protection since long. You have good experience. Uh, we are uh, seeing uh, each other in IGF uh, for several times uh, and, and shared uh, the discussion as well. You also belong to, uh, you are also a member of uh, Dynamic Coalition on uh, Child Rights. So uh, what is your uh, personal experience uh, what, from uh, protection issues and ethical uh, legal issues on, on uh, protection of uh, children online, especially uh, when AI is significantly uh, contributing and, and intervening on the uh, these platforms. Yuta. Yeah, thank you so much for not only inviting me, but posing such an, an important question to me. Uh, first of all, I would like to say you, you interest used me as an expert in child protection issues and uh, you may know that the Dynamic Coalition even changed their name from Child Online Safety Coalition to Children's Rights Coalition in the digital environment. I, th I think it's important to put that right from the beginning that children have a right to protection, to provision and to participation. So we always need to look for a balanced approach of these areas of rights. Um, and um, of course, when it comes to artificial intelligence, I would like to quote from the uh, general command number 25 to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. You, you may know that the rights of the child have been laid down in 1989, uh, when although the internet was there, it was not designed to be used by children. Um, and the UN Convention doesn't refer in any way to the Internet as, as a means of communication, of access to information, and so on and so on. So that was the reason why uh, four or five years ago the Committee uh, of the United Nations, the Committee on the Rights of the Child, decided to have such a general command uh, in regard of children's rights in the digital environment to give more a closer look into what it means that children are now living in a world that is mainly affected by use of digital media and look into how we can protect them. And in, in one of the very first articles of this general command it says <coughs> explicitly that artificial intelligence is part of the digital environment. It's not only a single thing, it, it's woven into everything that now means the digital environment. So it's therefore necessary, necessary to have a look whether artificial intelligence is, is, can be used or is, is able to improve digital environment for children, whether it can help us to address uh, risks that have already been mentioned by Michael, uh, whether, um, whether it can help to detect content that is, on the one hand, harmful for children to be watched on the Internet, but also for content that is directly re related to the abuse of children, which 
is where we are talking about child sexual abuse imagery, but nowadays, and that is also due to the use of artificial intelligence and new functionalities and technologies that the internet is used to perform online live sexual abuse of children. And that is also where we have to, to have a look at what artificial intelligence, how it can be beneficial to detect these things, but also where it might pose additional risks to children. And I stop at that point, and I, I'm pretty sure we will go deep into that. I'll come to uh, uh, on detection side on next round. Um, Yuta, can you uh, share me some more uh, issues from ethical and, and uh, legal side, if, if uh, you can say uh, some lights on this. Y you mean uh, the, the ethical and legal side of detection of harmful, of, of child sexual abuse imagery it, in general? It ethical issues of uh, use and, and misuse of uh, technology and platforms. Uh, then. <laughs> okay, I, I do think that uh, um, the speaker on my left side has much more to say about the technology behind that. Uh, what I can say so far from research is we, we need both. We need to use, to, to deploy artificial intelligence to, to become, yes, to monitor the content, to, to find and detect uh, uh, the content uh, for the benefit of children. But still, I'm pretty much convinced that uh, we cannot uh, give that uh, responsibility to uh, to the tech technology alone. We we also need human intervention. Thanks. Uh, initially, uh, in in my sequence, uh, Mr. Gopal was uh, next to you. But uh, as you just referred, I'll go to uh, Sarim first and then <laughs> come back to Gopal. So, uh, uh, Sarim. Uh, now uh, you have uh, two very significant uh, opinion on the plate and uh, to respond on that. And, and uh, again, uh, the same questions uh, that I would like to ask. Uh, uh, meta platforms are significant uh, for uh, not only for kids, for all of us, but uh, kids are also uh, coming to uh, various platforms and not only meta platforms, we, uh, we neutrally discuss uh, as a platforms. So, uh, what is your uh, thoughts on this? What are the major issues on, on the platforms, uh, including meta platforms, about the uh, opportunities, of course, uh, as, as you uh, rightly mentioned, uh, first comes rights and then only if, if any violation, then uh, production is there. So, uh, uh, Sarim, uh, can you share some of your thoughts? Thank you, Babu, and uh, honored to be here to talk about this very uh, serious uh, uh, issue and, uh, and humbled, obviously, with the, the speakers here. And then, and I think, I, as they've previously said, I just want to just reiterate that this is a global challenge that requires a global response and a multi-stakeholder approach. And I think law enforcement alone can't solve this. Tech can, industry cannot alone solve it. So this is one where we require civil society. We need families. We need parents. Um, so that's how we have, as Meta, have approached this issue, and so we work on all those fronts um, in terms of, um, you know, industry. I think this is also a good example where the the child rights and the child safety industry actually has can can be an example for many other areas, actually, like terrorism and and others, because um, we are part of a tech coalition, uh, which was formed in 2014. Microsoft, Google are also part of that. That's been. Uh, in an excellent forum for us to collaborate and share best practices um, and come together to, to address this challenge. Um, and we're actually, uh, in 2020, uh, as part of Project Protect, we committed to expanding the scope of that to protecting kids and, and thinking about child safety, not just you know, preventing the most harmful type of stuff, which is the CSAM and other things, but, but also like keeping kids safe. So I think if I were to summarize the Meta's approach, um, you know, we have... We look at the issue in three buckets. So for the first would be uh, prevention. Um, and this is important because, you know, and this is where AI can, AI has a, play, has a role to play in all of these three areas. So for, when you think about prevention, you know, we have something called, for example, search deterrence. So when someone is going out there on platforms and trying to look for 
such content, you know, <laughs> you know, I think Michael uh, at one point talked about pre-crime, right? So I think we actually do, you know, AI and, and you know, type of heads use is, is based on AI as well in terms of what people are typing. We prevent searches coming up uh, within Facebook and our other Instagram and other search. Uh, mechanisms to prevent such content from surfacing and if people are intentionally trying to type this stuff we actually give them warnings to say this is actually harmful and illegal content that you're trying to look up and and, and divert them towards uh, you know support uh, mechanisms so that's that's a pretty important for prevention but also for you know for if you think about the bad behavior uh, you know we um, sometimes kids are vulnerable and they are you know they might get friend requests from people who are uh, adults or they're not even connected to strangers so now we actually have in-app advice and warnings popping up to them to say, you know, you shouldn't accept people, accept like friend requests from strangers. This person is not even connected to your network. So those are things that AI can actually help and detect and just surface, um, like in-app advice, safety warnings, uh, notices, and um, also preventing unwanted interactions. So we actually do uh, intervene and disrupt those sort of types of, you know, suspicious behaviors when we detect that on using using AI. So prevention is that one bucket where we are uh, optimistic and, and excited about what AI can do to, to prevent harm from occurring. The second bucket is, is, is the large part of the discussion that we've seen already around detection. Um, you know, detecting CSAM has been a large, uh, uh, I think for over a decade, it's been a large focus for, for the industry uh, using like obviously technology like photo DNA, which was initially built on by Microsoft and we've actually built on top of that. Um, where we now have photo and video matching technology that Meta has open sourced, uh, I believe just recently. Uh, that's called uh, PDQ, um, and as well as TMK, uh, uh, which is for video matching. So th that's been open sourced on GitHub. So now, yeah. A bit uh, clarification about PDQ and TMK, you know. Uh, yeah. Audience may not, uh, may yeah, I mean, know. those are acronyms that are easier to, to Google, PDQ, and, and these are basically, it's like built on top of photo DNA, but it's been okay. open sourced so that any platform, any company, so we don't, we want to make sure that this is something that Meta truly believes in open innovation, that, you know, bad actors, they will use technology in multiple ways. I think uh, our best defense is to open source and uh, this technology, make it accessible to more safety experts and more companies out there. You don't have to be as large as Meta to be able to implement child safety measures. Now, if you're an emerging platform in, in Zambia or in any other country, you can take this technology and ensure that you prevent uh, both um, uh, it sort of spread of this type of uh, CSAM content, but also detection uh, and, and sharing of hashes and digital signatures uh, to, to detect CSAM. So that's where it helps for both photos and videos. So it's called PDQ for photos and TMK plus PDQF for, for videos. That's been open source on GitHub for any developers and other uh, companies to take. And to, this also helps for transparency and um, for you talks about ethics. Like, you know, this shows the tech that we use so we can be externally audited on how, what's the kind of technology that we use to detect this. This is also technology we use internally for obviously training our algorithms on detection. Um, you know, and, and, and machine learning technology to ensure that we are able to detect these kinds of contexts. Uh, and the lastly, the most important issue where uh, AI is also helping is response. Uh, and that's where law enforcement comes in and other civil society and uh, safety organizations like the National Center for Missing and Exploitative Children. They're a very important partner for Meta uh, and other companies uh, where, you know, anytime we do detect CSAM content, uh, we actually even help them build a case system using the same technology that I mentioned um, and, and other, so if it's youth, for example, that are dealing with um, uh, non-consensual imagery uh, issues, uh, you know, that they've put up themselves. And so there's a project called Take It Down uh, that, that's been launched by NECMEC, which helps. Uh, and that's cross-platform. It's Meta's on there, TikTok's part of it, other uh, com companies are part of it, where those images can be prevented from spreading. So those are important initiatives and that response and closing that loop with NECMEC that works with law enforcement around the world. They have a cyber tip helpline that helps law enforcement, uh, you know, um, in, in their response is, is really critical. So I think I'll, I'll just pause there, but I think that's sort of the three areas where we see uh, technology as well as AI is playing a very important role in preventing, detecting, and responding to anti-child safety issues. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sharim. Uh, one very interesting issue that uh, governments uh, in, in developing world are complaining about the platform operators that platform operators are not not cooperating in in, in, in the uh, investigation issues when 
uh, from a developing country uh, when they don't have much technology uh, to, to catch uh, the bad people. Uh, Michael, uh, uh, I'll come, uh, come back to Gopal uh, again. Uh, you just uh, sparked that question, that's why I'm c going to uh, Michael. Uh, Michael, what is your uh, experience while dealing with uh, uh, this kind of uh, issues, especially uh, uh, what are the response from uh, plat uh, platform providers on child abuse cases uh, online? Uh, so basically, uh, that depends on which platform that content is on. Facebook has been a, a little bit responsive. They are responding. Instagram, they're responding. TikTok being a new platform, we're still trying to find ways and means of uh, engaging their law enforcement uh, department, uh, a liaison department. Also, we've seen an increase in terms of like, uh, in terms of um, like local Providers, those ones, it's much easier for them to bring down the content. It's much easier for them to, to more like um, follow the guidelines of like putting an age limit to whatever they are posting. If it's a short video, if it's, it contains a bit of some violence, contains some nudity or any other uh, I, uh, feature we can deem to be inappropriate for a child, they are required to do the correct thing of either uh, block the age in terms of it being accessed on Facebook, because if I joined Facebook and I, I entered my age as 13, so that content will not reflect on my timeline or on my feed because of my age. But as I've said earlier on, it's difficult to monitor a child who's opened their own Facebook account because they'll just make themselves 21. You've seen on Facebook there are people who are 150 years old. You check on their birthday, they say this person is 120 years old because this platform themselves, like Facebook, does not actually help us in addressing the issues of uh, age getting. So basically, as a way of addressing most of these challenges, I will restrict myself to Meta because they can answer to the question to any issue I'm going to raise because they are part of the panel. I can't discuss about Google, I can't discuss about any other platform which is not here. So Meta has been responsive, though in a, in a way, at times it is slow, but based on their law enforcement portal, issues of child exploitations are given priority. Issues to do with um, probably freedom of expression, those ones may be a little bit slow. But on Meta's part, I would still give them 100% because within a shortest period of time, when you request either for a takedown of data or for information behind this account and that, they will still provide you within the shortest period of time. So my experience with Meta so far has been okay. Thank you. Can I just yes. Please. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I, that was not pre-scripted. I had, not, I had no idea what Michael was going to say, but thank you for that feedback. I, I did want to just comment on the age verification uh, issue. I think that's something that's obviously in discussion with experts around the world in different countries, lots of discussions going on. But we at Meta, we are testing uh, some age verification tools that we started testing in June in, in some countries. And based on an initial results, we see that uh, we have about 96% of teens who tried to change their birth date. We were able to actually stop them from doing that. And so again, it's I don't think any tech solution is going to be perfect. But we are, you know, there are uh, sort of attempts being made to figure out what does. Uh, this is on Instagram, by the way, this age verification uh, tool that we have. Um, and we, we hope to, to you know, based on those results, expand it further to prevent uh, minors from seeing content that they shouldn't be seeing, even if they've sort of tried to change their age and things like that. Just wanted to comment on that. Thanks, thanks, sir. Now, uh, finally, I'll come to uh, Mr. Kupa. So uh, we have discussed various issues from technical perspective, some, some, some uh, direct enforcement perspective as well. And Utah has uh, uh, discussed certain issues, uh, and, and she also uh, referred uh, Child Rights Convention as well. Uh, as a, as a uh, long practicing lawyer, what do you see in, in, in your country perspective uh, from Nepalese uh, context? What are the major legal protections uh, for uh, children, especially when we uh, talk about the online protection, protection over the uh, online platforms? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you, Babu. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to say something about first about my country. 
of course, uh, I'm representing uh, Nepal Bar Association. That means uh, the uh, human right uh, protector, the institution of human right protector. Uh, basically, we have uh, four, uh, four uh, subjects we are just focusing on. Just uh, first is we are human right. Uh, we, we deal with human right. Secondly, the democracy, uh, the rule of law, and the human uh, this. The fourth issue is, uh, you know, uh, the independent of judiciary, the issue of independent of judiciary. Of course, being a human right protector, we have to focus on the child right issue too. Uh, this is our duty that we are focusing on the human uh, child right issue. Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, in our present constitution, uh, Article 39 explicitly says that uh, we have right to child. Uh, every child uh, shall have a right to name, birth, and uh, recognition along with her his or her identity. Every child shall have a right to education, health, maintenance, uh, proper care, sports, entertainment, and overall personality development from the families and the state board. And every child shall have a right to elementary child label. Child label. Elementary child label, uh, child development, and child, child participation. No child shall have engaged in any factory. This is the important right for a child in Nepalese constitution. Mine or similar other hazardous work. No child shall be subjected to child marriage, transported illegally and, uh, and kidnapped or taken hostages. No child shall be recruited or used in any army police or any armed group or to be subjected in the name of culture or religious traditions to abuse, exclusion or physically or mentally, physical, mental, sexual or other form of exploitation or improper use by any means or any, any manner and no child shall be subjected to physical, mental, or any other form of torture in home, school, or other places and condition, whatever. So it's, this is the uh, this is the uh, constitutional right. And you, mean, you mean very a very clear uh, protection of uh, child yeah. in in uh, like uh, abuse of. Uh, Children online as well that reflects in in the constitution. Yes, you mean? yes. In our constitution, we have uh, clear uh, clear uh, provisions uh, for protection of child right, and we have Child Protection Act also. The Child Protection Act it is criminalizes the civil uh, the child abuse and uh, activities online and offline. Child abuse activities online and offline both. And uh, we have a child, uh, uh, this pedophile cases, and the courts in Nepal is very strictly, very strictly uh, prohibit such type of activities. It is clearly uh, our court is in practice. And we have uh, this online child safety guidelines also, uh, online child safety guidelines. Explicitly uh, told that uh, this provide recommendations of action to the different stakeholders, and uh, we have, though we have not gone through the, gone through AI, and uh, not, not even think about it. <laughs> I would like to say not even think about it, but our constitution, whatever we have, uh, the legal provisions and whatever. Uh, we have the legal uh, constitutional provision. Uh, the child right is in this uh, 
phase is especially uh, especially our constitution and our legal framework especially very close to the child protection child protection issues what would i like to say and uh, this i can say that child right is our focus and child right is the core issue for our for our legal provisions constitutional and legal provisions too thank you uh, uh I'll go to uh, the uh, next round of uh, discussion uh, of this uh, session. Uh, basically, uh, when uh, we propose this uh, workshop, our workshop is uh, harnessing AI uh, to p uh, child prote protection, right? So uh, I'll come to uh, Sarim first. How uh, technology uh, are leveraging uh, protection of uh, child online? especially when uh, AI tools are available. Uh, what are the uh, tools, what are the models, and, and how this uh, can leverage uh, on, on uh, protecting child online? Thanks, Babu. So yeah, I think I can dig a bit deeper into the sort of my overview I mentioned. So as I mentioned, AI has been a critical component of uh, online child safety uh, prevention, detection, and response for, for a very long time. So this is actually, even though I think the Gen AI discussion has sort of maybe hyped the interest around AI for, for child safety, it's been uh, a very critical component of that response, um, as I mentioned. So the, the most obvious one, I, as I mentioned, is the CSAM, Child uh, Sexually Abusive Material, uh, and and it's, it started with Microsoft uh, 10 years ago with the photo DNA technology, um, which has evolved and, and we've uh, open sourced our, our own uh, since then. Um, and you know that 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 work on detection is is the most crucial because that's you know also helps with prevention, detecting things at scale. Especially we have a, a platform of 3.8 billion users, so you know we want to prevent such content from even from people even seeing it, from people from even uploading it. Um, and then also that involves a lot of, still requires a lot of human expertise. That's important. I don't think it's completely like humans are not involved because, you know, making sure you've got large, high quality data sets of CSAM material to train uh, the uh, AI to be able to detect this is, is sort of requires a lot of human intervention. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we still need human reviewers for things that maybe AI cannot detect. Uh, so that, there's definitely a challenge with Gen AI uh, in terms of maybe pr on the production side where, you know, people might be producing more of this more easily, but I don't think, I think we are, you know, on our side, we, we've got the defenses ready to build on and improve on to make sure that we're able to leverage AI to also detect those kinds of things. I think there's a lot more work to do in that space, uh, but we're, we have a good, uh, the industry has, has done well in terms of use, leveraging AI on the detection side. Uh, I think the prevention side is, to us, is more exciting because that's something new that we've focused on in terms of for educa user education, uh, youth education, um, preventing them from interactions that are suspicious, that are, uh, you know, with strangers and adults that, uh, that they shouldn't be having. Um, I think this issue of, um, you know, the parental supervision is an interesting one. We obviously have parental controls built into our products, into Facebook and Instagram. Do we, uh, we, we believe that parents and guardians know best for their kids in terms of, uh, but at the same time, you know, there are, there are obviously privacy issues that we also have to consider. So those are some of the the ethical discussions that are ongoing. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I think, the, so I think prevention and detection are excellent. I think the response side, this child safety is one of the few areas where we, the partnerships like NECBank and multi-stakeholder responses are so critical to ensure that, uh, you know, we're able to work with safety partners uh, all around the world, law enforcement around the world. We have a safety advisory group as well of 400 experts uh, from around the world that advise us on these sort of products and our responses. A very uh, a quick follow-up question, uh, Sarim. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, we have uh, safety uh, partners and uh, how it works, especially while uh, protecting, uh, protecting child. There are various uh, community standards and, and you know, uh, there are uh, even uh, some countries, uh, they, their uh, age of, though uh, CRC has very s specific uh, age group uh, on, on minority and majority and, and Certain uh, even in my country, there are some debates uh, in in recent past that 
uh, though it's uh, uh, the CRC says 18 years, and and our local uh, child uh, uh, legislation also says 18 years. But it's still, uh, even in Parliament, there was uh, some discussion that we should re reduce the age of uh, minority majority threshold. So, so how uh, uh, dealing with a different legislative regime, uh, platform operators work on on uh, um, combating uh, this kind of uh, issues? Yeah, I think those discussions are ongoing uh, as we speak uh, in many countries on terms of what is the right age to, you know, at what age do you require parental consent? Um, and so those, I mean, I, 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 everyone will have a different opinion on that. I, I think what we're trying to really focus on is that, of course, on, on Meta's platforms for most products, you need to be at least 13 to, to create an account. In some jurisdictions, it's, it's different. So we obviously respect law uh, wherever we operate. Um, However, I think our focus is really on, regardless of whether you're 13 or 14, like is, it's, the, it's the, the nature of the interaction and making sure that you are safe. Um, and, and same that whether, you know, if there's violent content, we have something, uh, you know, uh, what we call like marked as disturbing. So we, you know, as well, even for, for adults actually. So I think there's uh, making sure that uh, minors don't even see the content like that, but also if, even if adults see it, that they, you know, AI actually helps us to make sure that this might even make someone who's 18 uncomfortable. So we have technologies on that as well. So I mean, age is obviously a number, but at the same time, you know, we need to make sure the protections are in place, the systems are in place to uh, protect youth in general, uh, whether they're 13 or 14 or, or 17. Thanks. Uh, um, Michael, you would like, you want to respond on this, yes? I'm just adding on to what you have said. Um, among the issues that uh, is a little bit challenging is a classification of um, an inappropriate content. I would give an example. Mm, under Meta platform, 13 years is the minimum age one can join Facebook. But based on our laws and standards in the countries that we come from, 13 years is deemed to be a child who can't even probably own a cell phone. The second part is the content themselves. An image of violence, probably in a cartoon form, or music with some vulgar, violent content, or anything that may be deemed inappropriate for Zambia might actually be deemed appropriate. Say for the US, a child holding a gun in Zambia or in Africa, either through the guidance of the parent or without, it's literally something that is unheard of. But in the US, we've heard of children going with guns in schools, doing all sorts of things. We've seen images where if you look at it as a parent, you'd be worried. But that image is there on Facebook and is being accessed by another child in another jurisdiction where it is not deemed to be offensive. So issues of clarification themselves, they've played a challenging law up, just to add to what is, is said. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Yuta. Yes, thank you for giving me the floor again. I, I would like to go a bit more into where AI can be used, uh, or probably also where it, where it can't be used. And uh, um, some of you may know that there is already a um, new draft regulation in the European parliamentarian uh, process on child sexual abuse, which differentiates between three different uh, it's not different types, but it's three uh, things to be addressed. One is uh, already known child sexual abuse imagery, which uh, Sarum has described very well. It is possible to detect that with a very low false positive rate um, due to photo DNA and the improvement that already Meta and other companies have uh, made during the last years have led to all, uh, also being able to detect uh, video contact, which, which was quite difficult some years ago. It it's, uh, has become much better. Then the second part is not yet known sexual abuse imagery. So the new products, and they are coming in, in a huge amount, in huge numbers of images and videos are uploaded every day. And of course, it's much more difficult to detect 
this imagery that have not been classified uh, as being child sexual abuse imagery, and the false positive rate is much higher in this regard. And then the third part, which is the most difficult, is detection of grooming processes, where children are groomed into a contact to a stranger in order to be abused either online or to produce self-produced uh, sexualized content of them th themselves and uh, sending that to, to the grooming person. So we, we know that these different areas react to different artificial intelligence strategy in a different way. And the most difficult is the part in grooming where, where obviously if you haven't the means to look into the content, because the content of the communication might be encrypted, then you would need to use other strategies um, to, to detect patterns, for example, of the type of communication. One sender uh, addressing a thousand different profiles to get in contact in the, in the uh, expectation that at least maybe 1% of these, uh, of these addresses will react to the grooming process and getting in contact with the person. So, and that's, I think, it's where um, talking about shared responsibility, that could not be done by the regulator, it could not be done by the policy maker, but it could be done by the platform providers because you have the knowledge, I do think, you have the resources to look deeper into these new developments and try to find a, a technological way based on AI to address these issues. And I push the ball back to you because I'm pretty sure you can answer to that. Thank you. Actually, that's exactly, I think, the area of focus for us uh, in, in recent times is to focus on preventing grooming. And that's where AI is playing a very key role, as, as I mentioned, on just preventing that in, you know, unwanted interaction between an adult and a teen. Um, you know, so we've changed things like, for example, just preventing the default settings so a, a youth account uh, would not be able to message uh, you know, a, like a stranger. Uh, so, so that, and also, even on comments, so public information, so if a comment that's done by a youth, for example, will not be visible to, to an adult. So we're, we're actually trying uh, to, to kind of reduce that sort of unwanted interaction. It's still early days for this, but I think we've taken measures already. We haven't waited to know, we know this is the right thing to do in terms of you know, uh, ensuring that adults are not able to discover teen content. So in, in, the, in Instagram, for example, in our discovery reel, you, you won't see any youth content uh, there. That's, um, you know, and same, with whenever we detect this sort of, uh, any, any attempts of friend requests, as I mentioned, that was an example where it's someone who's not in your network, we, we, we do give warnings to teens, to, and that's an uh, opportunity to educate, to say, like, shouldn't be, this person is a stranger, you shouldn't be accepting a you know, friend request, to discourage them. Um, so I think you're right, this is the, the right focus for us to kind of continue using technology and AI to prevent sort of grooming and, and protecting the sort of unsuspicious interactions and unwanted interactions between, uh, you know, teens and, and adults. Very, very uh, significant issue. Uh, Yuta just uh, referred that uh, uh, detection of uh, grooming process of a child in, in uh, platform. I have myself uh, dealt with uh, certain uh, cases in, in, in Nepal as well. So uh, it's uh, also uh, Michael Ray's uh, age uh, classification of use of platforms and, and there are various categories of uh, age uh, who gets uh, the connected with the platforms. Uh, as a business or platform providers, one of platform providers, uh, maybe my question could be a law enforcement issue, but uh, from accountability perspective, if, uh, if it is seen that a platform is uh, uh, used for a long uh, grooming of child, and, and uh, leading uh, of significant uh, 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 abuse to child, then do you see uh, the, uh, as, as you rightly mentioned that uh, share accountability, do you see the platform also should share the accountability of, of that serious uh, incident, not only uh, the matter of law enforcement? Or you're not clear my question, Sareem? I think um, platforms uh, definitely have a responsibility to keep uh, their users safe. Um, 
and and I think as as Michael alluded to it, we, you know, as I said, this is a global issue, requires a global response. We have to do our part in that, uh, and we do that by using the, making sure we create the product by having safety by design. And some of these changes we're making is literally safety by design, like when we're developing these 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 features, to make sure that how would how would youth uh, you know use this, and how could they how could we keep them safe. Um, you know, even even like you know when you're, uh, we don't suggest, for example, adults in your people, friends, you know, like things like that. So these are this is safety by design, right, in the product. But beyond that, when something bad happens, absolutely, we you know we do work very closely with law enforcement from around the world, including with NECMEC as, through NECMEC as well. Uh, when we see a situation where you know a child is in danger, uh, and 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 many times, I mean, you, you won't read about it in the paper, but platforms do cooperate and they they reach out to law enforcement with the information that they see um, to ensure that you know child and or anyone can can be kept safe. Uh, at least that's that's my view. I obviously can't speak for <laughs> on behalf of every platform, but <laughs> that's how we operate at Meta. I have two questions for the panelists, but before uh, going to uh, those questions, it's my questions in future will be related with privacy and the uh, future strategy. Before that, I'll take a few uh, questions uh, from the audience as well, and I open the floor for uh, your questions. Uh, if uh, you have any question from the floor, uh, I would like to welcome. Yes. So the, thank you so much for the conversation. So the question about... Yeah, please um, introduce me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. My name is Sumana Shrestha. I'm a parliamentarian from Nepal. Uh, when it comes to protecting children, uh, one of the other things we also need to protect them from is bullying, right? So we've got so many different languages. What is, um, what are, what is Meta, for example, doing about content moderation in different countries in which it's used? It will be great to know. Thank you. Thank you for the question and for joining this discussion. Uh, yeah, we have very clear policies uh, against bullying and harassment uh, on our platform across all our surfaces. It's the same policy on Facebook and Instagram um, and others. So um, uh, we we have um, uh, the same policy is applied everywhere. So we want to protect pe the same protections to all all youth, uh, all adults as well. Uh, of course, our threshold is much much. Uh, uh, lower when it comes to kids and youth when we see the type of uh, you know bullying uh, if, it, if a minor is involved in that type of situation that I, we our policies are much more harsher in terms of the uh, the enforcement action that we take uh, as well as like the the strikes uh, against uh, individuals who might be engaged in that behavior uh, we we do a variety of enforcement actions not just sort of stopping the behavior but also some restricting uh, sort of additional sort of abuse from that those types of accounts, but of course we have um, we rely on bullying is a difficult one where AI I, I have to say I don't think I mean it has made progress, but I think it's a difficult one where I, I, compared to CSAM and other areas in terrorism where AI has not been you know completely successful in in uh, sort of you know like where we don't have a 99% sort of uh, action rate on that because. Of the nature of bullying can be so different, right? And it may be, it may not be obvious uh, to uh, a stranger that there's bullying going on uh, because context is so important, you know, between the two individuals involved, uh, the cultural context. So I think the policies are clear. Uh, we do enforce and we do remove uh, any type of and prevent such kind of content, but we largely rely on our human reviewers. We have people from around the world, including people, experts from Nepal who. Uh, sort of review content in local language and and help us enforce against that. But with that type of content, we do rely also on the community to report because if no one reports it, then platforms are not going to know that this is bullying. And this is why that that context and intervention, including safety partners and civil society partners, we have partnerships in many countries with local safety organizations, including in Nepal, where. Uh, you know, victims of bullying can report uh, such content to the local partners who can ensure that uh, meta services take action quickly against that. More questions? Audience? Online question? Okay. We have uh, got one online question. Oh, there's a question from Stacy. What are the current accepted norms for balancing teens 
Human rights with privacy and security. Are we good at it? Any, any specific uh, resource person? No, they did not mention. So, uh, Sarim and Yuta? Okay, I'm going to take that one first. Um, I, I wanted already to refer to privacy rights uh, of children because I think it's part of the UNCRC that is the, the most ambivalent paragraph of the uh, Convention of the Rights of the Child because children have the right to a privacy of their own. So that also means, and it's very made very clear in the uh, general command number 25 because with with digital environment, with digital media, it has become more difficult also for parents to strike that balance between keeping the privacy of the children on the one hand, and that would mean not looking into their mobile phone like Michael had been talking about before, but on the other hand, parents also have uh, it's their, their task, their duty, to protect their children. So it's very difficult in the, in the social environment of the children, in the family, to, to, to have a balance between their right to privacy and their right to be, prote uh, to be protected. But also when we look in, into uh, that regulation, for example, that I've been quoting the EU uh, regulation that is underway, but also in other regards, that it is quite difficult because at the moment that we are asking for monitoring content, we know that is always an infringement of the privacy of the people that have produced that content or that are communicating. So looking into the private communication of people would be an infringement of their right to privacy and that would also mean an infringement of the rights of, of children and young people because they have that right to privacy as well. And on the other hand, if we don't do that, how could a platform like Meta or any uh, other platform uh, uh, follow their responsibility and accountability for protecting their users? That is quite, uh, and I do think it's an equation that doesn't come to a, to a, a fair solution. We, we need to tackle it from different from different uh, directions to try to find uh, a balance in this way. Yeah, just to um, add to that, I think this is a really important one. I think it, when you asked the question, it, it, was, it reminded me of the, the Google case where I think there was a parent, you know, who took a sort of a nude photo of their child to, <laughs> to send to a doctor during COVID. And, you know, I think Google's AI sort of marked that as sort of really harmful you know, sort of content and reported that, uh, that situation to law enforcement. So I think, yeah, there is definitely that balance uh, and the rights of the child um, versus rights of parents. And that's an interesting one. But I think, um, I do want to say on the, we, that industry's view also is quite, I think, against sort of this um, scanning private messages situation because all the numbers seem to indicate that we don't need to actually do that. If you look, the, all the things that I mentioned in terms of prevention and detection is is based on behavior, behavioral patterns. It's not based on necessarily content. CSAM aside, yes, of course, like that, you know, rec requires that to be. I, I think if we focus our energy on just public surfaces where users come and the kinds the behavior that we are trying to prevent grooming behavior, I think there's plenty of opportunity for technology and civil society and, and, and experts to focus their efforts and you don't need to break, get into like, you know, a private messaging. In fact, a good statistic is a Q1 of this year, and I'm, I'm only quoting meta numbers, I think the global numbers from platforms is even more. This is just meta's number. In Q1 of this year, we sent 1.2 million reports to NECMEC of child-related um, uh, CSAM material, right? Without <laughs> invading anybody's privacy, okay? That's a staggering number, that's just meta, all right? I, again, if you add the other numbers, I think it's even, even higher for other platforms. So I don't think we need to go there. I, I think that it gets into you know, a lot of unwanted sort of side effects that you don't want. Uh, I think if you focus our energy on behavioral patterns, 
uh, public surfaces, there's enough opportunity to prevent uh, sort of grooming behavior and keep kids safe. In in a previous conversation, uh, Michael mentioned about the privacy, and and I said uh, before uh, the floor opening the floor, I said uh, I have a, a separate question on privacy. Let's uh, discuss more on privacy. I would like to ask. Uh, more on uh, privacy. In in USA, there was big debate on on uh, COPA and CHIPA, the uh, Child Online Protection Act and and Child Internet Protection Act were uh, uh, largely debated, and and those debates went to the Supreme Court and uh, clearly discussed about the uh, uh, child protection is one side, and and freedom of adults uh, are uh, different side, right? So uh, how uh, we uh, can uh, meet the uh, better position, uh, especially from talking from a uh, development country perspective, uh, like uh, Nepal and Zambia, uh, 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 what kind of uh, legislative framework uh, could be more efficient? Because uh, lots of countries, they don't have a specific uh, Let's listen on, on online child protection. There might be certain provisions on, on the regular child protection act, but not a very clear uh, position uh, on ch child protection online issues. And um, Michael, I'll come to you first on, uh, to respond on this. How, what is your experience in, in Zambian uh, legal regime? How uh, your Zambian uh, legislative framework uh, is addressing this kind of issues? So basically, as I alluded earlier on, in 2021, we, there was a split in terms of uh, amending our Electronic Communication and Transactions Act, which contained both the aspect of cybercrime, cybersecurity, electronic communications, and other legislative issues on ICT. So now it was more like, um, I would say, we came up with two more legislations that we separated from the ECT Act. One of them is the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act. The second one was the Data Protections Act. So basically, the Data Protections Act covers matters and issues to do with privacy. But of course, privacy is a generic term. At the end of the day, a child who's 10 years, what privacy do they need when they are under the control of a guardian or a parent? They may not know that which is good, that which is bad, because of their st stage at, of their age and state of mind. Also coming back to the issues of security and safety, they become vulnerable the moment issues of privacy comes in. If you ask a child to say, let me have your phone, let me see whom you've been communicating to, a child would say, I have the right to privacy. What do you do? It's true, as long as you've deemed that child to be, to own a phone, it, in, silently you've allowed them to have a bit of some privacy. But again, it also depends on which platform they're using. I will give an example of my kids. My kids back home, for their YouTube channel, or any product from um, Google, I use a family account. That allows me to regulate what app they're installing. Even if I'm not there, I will receive an email to say, this one wants to install this application. It's me to either allow it or block it. The same happens to YouTube. So basically, I've taken that step because the human oversight, I will not always be there to see what they are doing. But somehow, technology will help me through AI to filter and uh, probably bring to my notice on certain things that technology feels like this is above their age. There are some games online that would appear innocent in the eyes of an adult. But as a child keeps playing those games, a lot of bad things, a lot of images that may be of sexual exploitation will be introduced in the middle of the game. But when you look at it as an adult, you won't even see anything. So uh, the, these providers, like in, in the case of Google, has a way of knowing which application, either on Play Store or any other platform, which is appropriate for a child. So as a step to protect my kids, 
have allowed them to use only a child, a family friendly account where, is, despite me being in Japan, I'm able to know if they viewed this video, which I may deem to be inappropriate, I will either block it from here or blah, blah, talk to them that never ever visit this page. Of course, Microsoft also may come up with their own policies through their browser on blocking certain um, sites and uh, probably pages or any other uh, thing that they may be doing online using their platform. But again, it comes back to the issue of human rights and privacy. To what extent are we able to control our kids? Are we able to control them based on the fact that they are using a single device in a house where this one uses in the morning, this one in the evening, or they've got single devices, or alternatively, we've allowed them to use single devices based on the fact that we've installed a family friendly account which enables you as a parent to monitor it. But of course, it's not always the case because a child is an adventurous person. They always find ways and means to bypass every other control. They seem to know more than we do. The same also applies to crimes where a child is a victim. A child may be groomed by somebody they are chatting with. They may be told, you place that, place this, place that. They will bypass all the controls that you've put in place. As much as you've put your privacy protections and uh, probably safety laws to how they navigate their online space, there's a third party out there who is taking control of them and making them do and visit certain things that they're not supposed to do. Salim, same question. No, I think this comes back to the, the prevention uh, aspect of it. And I think the last example that Michael just mentioned, um, you know, we, we're, the, we've changed our default settings for youth accounts exactly that to prevent any kind of interactions. I think prevention is <laughs> really uh, a good strategy and, and focusing, making sure having safety in there by design. Uh, and this is where AI is helping. Uh, I mean, on, uh, you know, the, the ongoing debate, um, as Michael said, I think kids are digital natives uh, in this world. And so they, you know, they are good at sort of circumventing all this stuff. But if, if there's safety and design into products and services that we use, and, you know, we have parental supervision tools as well on, on Meta, Meta's platform so parents are aware who they're communicating with and, and things like that. And what, what are they, what type of content are they interacting with? We, by default, we don't, kids don't see any advertising on Facebook, right? So that's obviously that's important. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, any co content that might be violent or graphically violent or inappropriate is not visible to them. As I said, even for adults, it's disturbing. So we do mark that as disturbing for adults so they don't have to see uh, the such content by, by default. So uh, it, it's an ongoing discussion, I think, where it's, the solution is safety by design and, and, and youth safety by design in products because the kids are sometimes early adopters of these things that, that come in and making sure that it's keeping them, if we keep them safe, we actually keep everyone safe as well, uh, not, just, uh, not just kids. Your turn. Yes, I, I have to respond to one thing that Salim said, and that is uh, when you say kids don't see advertisement on, on Meta, it's when they have been honest with their age. But when they have been lying on their age, they might be, uh, they might see advertisement. We have already been talking about age verification or age assurance. I would just say that it's key to, to solve the issue. If, as long as we don't know the age, I would say of all users, it's not only that we need to know whether a child is a child, we also need to know whether an adult is an adult to know that there is an uh, inappropriate communication going on. So and I'm pretty sure that in, in the near future we will have um, privacy saving methodologies to make uh, sure that the, the we know the age of the users to better protect them. But uh, coming back to that, that question uh, that you raised and posed also to, to Michael, I, I could say um, it's one sentence, talk to each other, parents, as well uh, as children have to talk to each other, and it's always better to negotiate what is appropriate for the child to do than to regulate. And I, I do think that the same applies to, to policy and to, to platforms and to the regulator. Talk to each other and try to find uh, a 
constructive solution between the two of them. Yuta, uh, I don't know whether this is uh, proper to ask you or not. Uh, 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 before you uh, mentioned about the upcoming legislation of uh, European Union Parliament, uh, can you share some of domestic uh, practices of European member state about uh, online child protection? Because I, I wanted to ask that question before, but. Uh, sequence uh, developed differently <laughs> sorry for that but uh, if you if you can share uh, any memory state uh, perspective on on online child protection so uh, do we have two more hours to <laughs> talk about <laughs> all yeah, the <laughs> one, one more round one uh, that yeah. that we have uh, in Europe. of course it's it's different uh, in the different countries uh, we we see that uh, and i think that's for uh, several years that countries uh, that start right now or have started to legislate two or three or five years ago have much more focus on the digital environment and how to legislate child sexual abuse in a way that is appropriate to the digital environment, while countries that have uh, longer uh, standing child protection laws that did not address the digital environment. Of course, they need to amend their laws, but that takes time. So the newer the legislation, the better it's, it is uh, fit for purpose to address child sexual abuse in, in the online environment. Uh, what we did in Germany was uh, in 2021, we got an amended Youth Protection Act that refers much more to the digital environment than it did before. And that has kind of that approach that I just have been talking about before. Uh, it's called dialogic regulation. It's not that it poses uh, obligations uh, on the platform providers, but it asks for a dialogue with the platform providers, try to find the best uh, solution. And I think that is much more future-proof than regulating, because you always can regulate only the situation that you are facing in the moment that you are doing the legislation. But we need to look forward, and uh, again, I'm referring to the platform providers, you're in the position to know what is in the pipeline, which functionalities will be added to your service. So if, if you do safety by design, then, or as Sonia Levitson put it just in a, another session, it should be a child-based uh, child design, then probably the regulator would not have so much work to do. Thanks, Yuta. Uh, Gopal, you want to say something on this? Uh, though, uh, before some time, uh, just uh, what is the right age of adult? Uh, this question is now uh, debatable in our context, in Nepalese context. Uh, we have now the marriage is, is in debate. Though before some time, uh, we have our parliamentarian, uh, I think she has gone. What is the correct age for marriage? Uh, we have a provision that uh, when a child completed 16 years of age, we provide uh, him or her citizenship certificate. That means a type of adult certificate. Citizenship certificate is provided in 16 years of age when he completed, she completed. And uh, a child can be voted for their representative uh, in Nepal, uh, in when he or she completed 18 years of age, uh, the voting right is to be provided uh, to the to the person. And third one is, what is the age of marriage? The age of marriage is 20 years. And many cases now, uh, in my practicing life, uh, many cases are laws before the court the rape cases are lost before the court. Uh, when, the, what is the consented age? What is the, uh, what is the age of consent? 
uh, that is in debate. And many people are in uh, jail nowadays. Uh, many people are in jail when they are, if they are conscientiously, uh, they indulge in self, uh, themselves uh, before the age of 18. And it is, it is the matter of questionable. That is why uh, it is very important and our civil society, this matter is now in debate in civil society too. And that is, it is very important for we, what is the proper, internationally, <laughs> though we have, we have set principles, we have examples, and what is the proper age for marriage, uh, and whether it could be, uh, whether it could be internationally uh, settled, the similar age or not. Uh, this is a very important question for we now, uh, that is why I just uh, I just raised these questions uh, to Sorry. our fellow yeah. to our fellow uh, to, to link this uh, issue. Uh, I'll uh, go to uh, Sarim yes. very briefly. Uh, Sarim, uh, especially when uh, the litigation comes and and the law enforcement agency uh, see the uh, different. Uh, is uh, age group uh, actors uh, content especially like uh, sexual relationship or any kind of uh, other similar kind of uh, content uh, as he, he was referring there are some uh, different legislation that allows uh, uh, relationship between uh, people and and uh, there could be use or uh, you know, as an evidence. So this this is the debate uh, at, at different societies. So how uh, uh, easy uh, to deal with uh, this kind of odd situations for uh, platform providers and, and what are uh, the platform pro providers' uh, uh, response on, on this kind of s issues? Yeah, I think these child safety issues are definitely top of mind for our trust and safety teams um, at Meta and I'm sure for other platforms too. And I think the NECMEC uh, number that I shared earlier is, is a good sort of uh, uh, proof point of how, how we cooperate uh, with uh, civil society and law enforcement. Uh, of course, there are some cases where we, we don't wait for NECMEC if it's, if it's an Im child in imminent danger. Uh, we believe that uh, our, our, we have child safety teams that, that look at this stuff uh, and these cases and, uh, and law enforcement teams that directly reach out to law enforcement in the country. Um, and yeah, there's been cases where we busted sort of these child rings as well. Um, so I think that's an ongoing effort. I wouldn't say it's easy. I think it requires a lot of, uh, I mean, AI has helped in that uh, effort, it, but it still requires human intervention and investigation. Uh, I think um, the age verification piece is interesting. As I mentioned, that that's where we are doing some tests and, and, and the AI does help because one of the solutions that, that they're testing is like, you know, where the youth has to, uh, send a video of itself for verification. Uh, so I think you can re rely on IDs to a certain extent, but there are other questions of uh, data collection on that. How many, how much do private citizen data are you going to collect? And then uh, there are other uh, suggestions where you link into government systems, but then there are other surveillance sort of concerns on that. So there, it's I don't think there's a silver bullet here, uh, and I don't think any solution is going to be perfect, right? Uh, we are doing tests uh, with age verification, as I said on Instagram. Uh, I think we'll slate, wait and see what results say. There'll be some level of verification, but I, again, I don't think anything will be perfect. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, but we do need to sort of figure out, as, as uh, uh, I, I, I said, that we need to figure out like whether an adult is an adult and whether a child is a child. And, you know, and, and especially we have other behaviors that we need to detect of like, you know, inter suspicious behaviors and fake accounts and things like that as well. So that's where AI is also helping us definitely quite a bit. Thanks. Uh, 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 Paolo, uh, very brief question. You frequently uh, mentioned uh, we, we report to NECMEC, we send report to NECMEC. NECMEC is based in uh, an, an, a not-for-profit organization based in the U.S., right? So w w what could be your response if uh, other jurisdictions uh, wanted to collaborate with you? NECMEC collaborates with law enforcement around the world. So if you are a law enforcement agency in any country, uh, you can reach out to them. They have, I think they, uh, there's another organization called ICMEC that they also partner with, um, which is international, and they work with law enforcement to set up their cyber, cyber tip helpline. 
So that gives local law enforcement access to uh, that, that information. Jutta. Yes, I, I just wanted to add something because I'm very grateful for you to bringing in the question of consent because the, uh, the, the principle of age of consent has also come under pressure pretty much in the digital environment where um, the question is what has been consensual and was, what wasn't. And uh, the general comment that I have been referring to before uh, says in Article 118 that uh, self-generated sexualized uh, imagery that is shared in consensus between young people should not be criminalized. So that, I think that is a very good provision for, for uh, young people also need to, to uh, experience their sexual orientation, to, to learn about each other. But when it comes to these image, images, AI would not be able to, to understand whether it was a consensual sharing of images or whether it was not in consent. Uh, consent. So that makes it very difficult to apply such a rule like, okay, what is consensual and what is not consensual? And that's also, as, as I said before, we can rely on artificial intelligence in very much aspects and I'm pretty sure it will get better and help us better to protect children, but there are certain issues where artificial intelligence cannot help and we need uh, to have human interventions. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, any questions from um, audience? If you have, we have very less time uh, for the session. If you have any question, please. Just for the protection of the right of the child, the companies or the social media groups should be responsible enough for the registration as well as the content and the use of AI to identify the local language so that there will not be any kind of uh, misuse of the word or something else. Just like uh, I would like to give my own example. It was about uh, eight years ago. I got a friend request from by putting the name of the one beautiful uh, child. She was about, uh, the, the picture was seen about 13 or 14 years old and I didn't accept. She frequently called me at the evening, and I ignored that one. And then what happened? I, I thought that, oh, I should tell, I, I should note that call, and then I should tell uh, their parents that, what, that your child is doing this thing. Then I asked her, to give her, do you have your private number or phone number, something else? I don't like to talk in the social media. Then, what happened that? She was not the child. She was some uh, woman that she wanted uh, to have some informal relation with, with me or someone else. Then I asked her, why? Why did you put the name of a um, picture of the child and the name different thing? And then she said, oh, if I put the picture of the child, then I would like that one. This is the case I face by myself. Similar things may happen for others also. So that the registration systems in the social media should have some authentication mechanism. Without that, there might be some similar cases that, that might happening to others also. So that uh, uh, my request to the uh, social media agency is to be more accountable, responsible, and intelligent enough that our platform is not misused. That is my suggestion as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.
आशीर्वाद थैंक यू बाबर सो आई मूव अ लिटिल बिट टू द ह्यूमन साइड व्हाइल वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एआई वेरी वेरी ब्रीफली ओके टाइम इज वेरी वेरी ब्रीफली सो यंग पीपल हैव बीन वेरी मच यू नो एक्सपीरियंस अ लॉट ऑफ पीयर प्रेशर एंड इन डिजिटल एरिया सोशल मीडिया हैज कॉज्ड इट इवन मोर for example the increase level of anxiety depression body misconcern disorder eating and suicidal thought and so when we look at the root cause of peer pressure the the need to fit in the fear of rejection and looking at uh, the sense of belonging those are needed those are the human aspects uh, so uh, and due to that they are very much vulnerable to online exploitation right so what is a social media company doing in terms of the human aspect as well along with the technical one thank you uh, just a short one uh, my question is also for uh, sarim i'm binod basnet uh, from nepal uh, so recently there has been some message that is circulating in the facebook messenger that uh, you have been ch- uh, yeah, you have been infringing some child protection policies of facebook so if you don't follow some instructions your account will be suspended and stuffs like that and when you go into that message there is a photo of meta with uh, the meta logo and it's very panicking for young users and they tend to give in their contact details and their id and the password and stuffs like that but i think in reality they are phishing uh, sites that are seeking your passwords so my question is what is facebook uh, doing in regards to those phishing hackers what is the uh, what is the retaliating or what is the uh, policy that facebook takes against those uh, phishing sites thank you thanks uh, though uh, uh, our original time is almost about to uh, conclude but uh, questions are coming so <laughs> sarim uh, directly to you at I the mean, first the questions time. are all directed at me i'm happy to continue the conversation <laughs> after this uh, discussion but look um on on all fronts uh, with I your think, concluding remarks yeah concluding remarks would be um, i think i'm going to go back to my introduction to say this is not a, just a platform that can solve all the solutions i think we have technology that can assist technology still requires uh, human expertise both from the platforms but also expertise from civil society law enforcement and government uh, and parents and families uh, so uh, fishing is a long standing issue i think uh, the smartest people in this room have been fished and it has you know whether that's from meta or some uh, or some other logo that that they recognize i think it's a matter of like when you're short of time and you your attention span is short you you could be fished very easily so i think that's an issue where we need to increase digital literacy and education and actually from a system, from a systems perspective the way you fix that is you have authentication right one time authentication so that even if someone does get fished that they're not able to you know your credentials don't uh, one time authentication will prevent a sort of phishing attacks from getting access to systems so that's i think systemically needs to change so that's a separate issue on uh, absolutely i think in terms of safety we meta cannot uh, alone solve these issues i think in terms of the human aspect we work with the 400 safety advisors we have but there are other organizations that we're, we're we're members of the we protect alliance as well and other organizations where us with along with industry we want to protect kids and uh, i mentioned earlier on how we are using our platforms and using ai to detect and educate kids on when there's potential grooming or potential unwanted interactions to prevent kids from interacting with with adults uh, so those are some efforts but there's a lot more that we can do and we're open to ideas uh, the gentleman who mentioned uh, that i think he was maybe uh, fished or maybe there was some uh, other attempt to connect with him yeah, of course i mean th- we also rely on community i think some of the challenges we have is people don't report i think they think that platforms have the 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 manpower or the um the ability to just know when something's wrong we won't until people civil society and users report things to us and that's where we rely on our partners uh, so that's really key when these kinds of situations happen to to protect uh, uh, yourself but also your your community very uh, closing one minute less than one minute response from michael <coughs> Uh, so basically we will not address any of the challenges we've discussed here if there's no close collaboration between the private sector between the governments and the public sector and also the tech companies so in as much as we can't put trust in ai to help us policy cyberspace the human factor and close collaboration will be the key to addressing most of these challenges thank you thank you yuta 
Yes, thank you for giving me the opportunity for one last statement. I would like to refer to Article 3 of the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child that states the principle of the best interest of the child and in any decision that we may take, that policymakers may take, that platform providers may take, just consider whether this is in the best interest of the child and that means the individual child, if we are talking about a case like we have heard of some of these cases, but all children at large also consider whether the decision that shall be taken, the development that shall be made, the, the technological invention that shall be made, is it in the best interest of the child? And then I do think we will achieve more child protection. Thank you. Gopal, closing. Uh, we are the part of uh, child right. Uh, we already signed in the child right uh, protection treaty. So uh, being the part of very responsible part of society, uh, being the president of Nepal Bar Association, uh, I am committed uh, to uh, to always uh, in favor of child right protection uh, protection acts and its amendments. It's uh, possible possible a subject. I mean, positive amendments and uh, so on. So very, uh, I'm very thankful to uh, Bauram to give me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As uh, we are running out of time, I'd like to uh, thank my panelists, my uh, uh, team of organizers, and all of you uh, who actively participated on this. And of course, for the uh, benefit of a child dedicated to the child, uh, I'd like to thank all of you. And, and I uh, close uh, this uh, session. And, and uh, we hope we'll have a good report of this uh, discussion and uh, we'll be sharing the report uh, to all of you uh, through our channel. Thank you very much.